And as far as th this goes, there are several different times where you might interact with this. Now, the most common thing is, again, for acetic acid is vinegar. Uh, let's just assume this is a total estimation. I have no idea what the real molality is, but let's say it has a molarity of 0 0.01. That's not very concentrated at all. What that means is that, you know, you can put it on your salad, do whatever you do with vinegar. Some people drink it, whatever. You use it to make canned stuff, whatever. I mean, yeah, you, it, you can do a lot of stuff with it. It's not dangerous in any way. However, at the same time, let's say we had something that had a concentration of, we'll say, like 14 molarity. So exact same chemical formula, no difference whatsoever. You just have this. It's put into some water. It's just differing amounts of water, how dilute it is. Now this stuff, 14 molar, is incredibly concentrated. It is something that you would not, I mean, you would not ever have any interaction with this outside of a chemical lab. Because this is the kind of thing where it would burn your hands immediately. It would cause you severe physical pain. Okay, but how does it have a different molarity? Now here's the difference. This is the exact same chemical formula. All the difference is, is that like so let's say I had, you know, like this much, like I had a little little bit of this this acetic acid. What I'm doing, I'm putting it into water. Now the amount of it that I the amount of water that I put it into, like think about, you know, hot chocolate. So you've got hot chocolate. If you put one scoop of hot chocolate into a glass of milk or water or whatever, it's concentrated, you know, it has some flavor to it, right? Let's say you put two scoops in, though. It's going to be a lot f more flavorful, right? Yeah. Let's say you put three scoops in. It's going to be, like, maybe too much even. You see what I mean? It's all about how much of the solute you put into the solvent. The more solute, the more concentrated. So that's the point. Now, the formula is this. As I was saying, this is probably the most important formula you're going to learn this year, maybe, actually. It's also the easiest. It's moles specifically of solute over <coughs> liters of solution. Solute over solution. Liter stands for solution? No, liter stands for it's the volume of solution in liters. Yeah. Yeah. Now, a few other things. So capital M is concentration in molarity. Now it's specifically a capital M because there's there's lowercase m, which uh, is something called molality. It's totally different. And just as a just so you know, we'll talk about this in a few days. But if you ever see something in brackets, that specifically indica indicates concentration in molarity as well. Just so you know. Now to give you uh, an example here. To, just to explain sort of what molarity is. Let's say we have 7.4 molar HNO3, that's nitric acid. Now what this is telling us, this is saying that for every 7.4 moles of HNO3, you have one liter of H2O. This is sort of the expanded form of of that, because remember, molarity is moles over liters. And it's like a fusion, like how we were working on a fusion before, mm -hmm. where it was whatever you calculate over one, it's the same thing here. How'd you get H2O? Well, because w any time we, we're going to assume that any time we dissolve something, our solvent is water. In this class, th it's always water. It's always gonna be H2O? Yes. So that's, that's sort of the general idea here. Now what we're going to do, we're going to go through and do a couple examples off the worksheet. First one we're going to do is, amazingly, number one. So look at that. Now uh, the way this will work, we're going to do a couple examples. And you know, yeah. So seawater contains roughly 28 grams of NaCl per liter. What is the molarity of sodium chloride in seawater? This is a pretty simple problem. Like, you're going to be thankful and happy that most of these problems are as simple and as straightforward as they seem. So for example, uh, let's do this one. So we've got 28 grams NaCl 
it tells us that this is per liter. So how many liters can we assume for every 28 grams? One liter. So one liter H2O. Now it says specifically, what is molarity? We know that molarity is equal to moles over liters. So yes, what we need to do, we know we have one liter of water, so we can put that on the bottom. The only thing we have to do is convert our grams to liters, or pardon me, our grams to moles. So 28 grams of NaCl, you convert you know, grams of NaCl, moles of NaCl. <coughs> Because it said liter. it said you know twenty eight grams per liter, so if we assume we have twenty eight grams, that means we had one liter. If we wanted to say we had uh, fifty six grams, we'd have two liters. So we do this. Fifty eight point four four is our masses off the periodic table for sodium chloride. You add up sodium and chlorine, and you're going to get some answer. Yeah, point four seven. So. So you get 0 0.479 moles. Now, actually, we'll, we will rewrite this. We'll go 0 0.48 moles NaCl. Now, uh, the last thing that you're going to do, I mean, it's pretty straightforward. All it wants you to do is what is the molarity. So this is really easy. You just do moles over liters. And since this is, since this is one liter, I mean, it's, that's it. So moles over one liter, that's equal to molarity. So our molarity is what? It's equal to 0 0.48 molar NaCl. That's the answer. Now all you have to do here is, is that. It's just that simple for most of these problems. The only things you have to pay attention to, I would say, are like attention to detail making sure your units are good, making sure that, you know, your volume, that everything is correct in, in what we need. So let's do, we're going to do two more, and then we'll go on to the bed. No. Next one we're going to do is number three. Oh, well, she's still there? Oh, okay. When you collect this, is it on to the water? Just do, just do the examples in the order I'm doing. So next, uh, let's say we've got what is the molarity of 5.3 grams? So 5.3 grams. No, you're, you're staying out there still. So... So we've got 5.3 grams of Na2CO3 and 400 milliliters of water. Now this wants to know, again, what is molarity? All you need to do, very simply, very straightforwardly, is just figure out, you know, what are the moles, what are the liters, do the math. So our formula, moles over liters. Wait, don't you have to convert molarity into moles and liters? Yes. So what we're going to do, we're going to do two conversions here. We're, yeah, we're going to convert grams to, to moles, and we're going to convert milliliters to liters. So you, got, you just got to do two things. And again, it's it's not like these are hard. As long as you just, you know, pay attention to detail, you will have no problem at all. All right, so our grams, I have this somewhere. Oh yeah. So it's one mole to 105.99. That's from adding up two sodiums one carbon, three oxygens, you add them up, that's what you get. So your moles of, you know, so your answer is equal to 0 0.05 moles of Na2CO3. Now, as a quick reminder, if you're not, like, totally sure on the metric conversions, you might want to, like, you know, brush up on those just for, like, a second because you're going to be using them a lot here. So when we want to convert from milliliters to liters, you know, use your conversion factor of one liter over a thousand milliliters. 
all I want to see on your paper is the division. Is is is, is the is the stuff plugged in? Like you do not have to show me you doing a metric conversion. Not. Where you get a thousand from? One liter is equal to a thousand milliliters. Remember that. For every one liter, there's a thousand. Like at one gram has or one kilogram has a thousand grams. Okay. So that's going to be equal to zero point four liters. So now all you do, if you just do moles over liters, it's zero point zero five moles over zero point four liters. So you get an answer. It, I think it comes out to be zero point one two five. I mean. I know I'm, I made it seem like that was a lot, but I just worked out every single step to the most detail possible. You could do that a lot faster, I'm sure, if you just did the conversions. You know, I mean, you could do those conversions pretty easily now. What's, uh, do you have to, the answer have to be over one? So, so no, that's what I'm going to show you next. This is the, this is the answer. That's molarity. But what this means, here's what this means. This is the same thing as saying that you have 0 0.125 moles of Na2CO3 over one liter of H2O. It means the same thing. So it's um, for every one liter of H2O, there's that many moles? Yes. Yes. Does she have a question? Okay. All right. So we're going to do one more. Just it's, it's where you're solving for moles instead of molarity. Then we're done. So we're going to do number seven now. Hmm. Number seven. So how many moles of NaCl, sorry, there, there's number seven. How many moles of NaCl are contained in 100 milliliters of a 0.2 molar solution? So you have 100 milliliters and it also gives you molarity of 0 0.2 so and, and this is NaCl so all you're doing here you have you know what are we solving for in this example now you're solving for moles so it's very straightforward again the only thing you have to do convert 100 milliliters to liters I'm just gonna move the decimal point over three times now to save us some time so all you do is plug your stuff in and solve. The only thing that you might want to see here, moles over 0 0.1 liters. Here's the only thing you might want to see. What I'm going to do is, instead of writing 0 0.2 molarity here, I'm going to write it as 0 0.2 moles over liters. Because molarity is equal to that, and it will allow our units to cancel out. So, what I mean by that is, Wait, what, you say? so, you know, molarity is equal to moles over liters. Okay. So instead of writing it 0 0.2 mole molarity, I just wrote it 0 0.2 moles over liters. The reason being is that now, when we solve the problem, oh, they can't. yeah, so th they're going to cancel out now. So you have 0 0.1 liters, your liters cancel, and you're left with just moles. So your mole value ends up being 0 0.02 moles of NaCl. Alright. Questions on, on the front side? Alright. We're gonna we're gonna do one other problem. It's on the back. That's it. So flip it over. We're just gonna do one more. Oh, this one's already got writing all over it. Vanessa, give me one. I got it. All right. Again, these all look long. These are easy. These are really easy. So last but not least, when we're talking about molality. We're going to do moles over kilograms. And what you want to do here, first thing, the only thing that you need to know, kilograms, it's, write this down, it's moles of solute over kilograms of the solvent. It's not the grams of 
it's not the kilograms of the entire solution. It's specifically the kilograms of just the liquid that you're dissolving stuff into. Okay? Correct. Usually water. In our case, always water. So to do this really quickly, uh, let's just get over with. So this wants how many grams of KCL. You've got 255 grams of H2O, and then you've got 0 0.445. Now, the difference here, this is not molarity. This is molality. It's a lowercase m. There's actually a difference. So, how do you do this? Well, what I like to do, I'm going to say KCL is our solute. I know that because that's being dissolved into our uh, solvent. So we're going to solve for moles of the solute, and then we're going to convert moles to grams. And that's it. First thing we need to do, convert grams of H2O to kilograms of H2O. Same thing as the milliliters to liters conversion, so it'll be 0 0.255 kilograms of H2O. Yeah, so we want grams to kilograms. Any questions there? All right. Next, we're just going to plug our stuff in, and we're going to solve it. Now, pay attention to what I'm going to do here so you don't get confused. Um, this molarity or this molality here, we're going to rewrite it as moles over kilograms because then when we set it equal again, it'll cancel out. So you'll have... Uh, moles over 0.255 kilograms. Anybody confused where that, that came from? Yeah. yeah. Which part? Point two. Oh, never mind. Seriously, which part? Yeah. What do you mean? Like, why did I rewrite it like that? Because molality, little m, is equal to moles over kilograms. So all I did was substitute in this instead of writing m. Because what it allows us to do is when you, when you solve the problem, it cancels out the, the uh, kilograms. Wait, isn't it just the same thing that you just added the unit of measurement? Mm -hmm. yeah, it's exactly the same thing. So you do this, you get some answer. I, yeah, I believe you get 0 0.113 moles of KCL. But the problem is not yet complete because you need to get to grams of KCL. Uh, it seems like a lot, but it's really not. So the last thing you got to do is go 0 0.113 moles <coughs> of KCL, and you want to convert that. Two grams of KCL. It's one mole is equal to seventy-four point five five. That's the the mass, and you end up with eight point four two grams of KCL. That was a lot. Hmm. It's just it is a long time of you know for a short problem. Wait. So so what what questions do we have on this? Yes. Why do you have to go back to grams? If grams mean how many grams? But we already converted kilograms to grams. Yes. So why would you want to go back to grams? Because, and that's a good question, because when you convert into grams, you are converting the solvent to grams. This specifies it wants how many grams of KCL, which is the solute. Mm, okay. okay, that's important, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, I put I moved 0.255 to the other side and then multiplied the two together. You follow? Yeah, but when I sit down the calculator, I didn't get that. I'll look at I'll, I'll look at the screen. Show me in a second. What? When it says volumes like must be dissolved, that's like the solute. Yes, the solute's dissolved in the solvent. All right.